Okay, so we're back at it. 50 and 50. Uh, huge thanks to Netflix for support to do this. I'm talking about Yone's disease, a disease there's no treatment for today. But I suppose um, the, the idea of this whole series, while Netflix are supporting me doing it, it's about information on animal health and obviously a thought for the day at the end of it as well in extraordinary times. So I'm going to talk about Yone's and I'm going to talk about what is Yone's and some of the key principles I think as farmers we need to get across and understand. So what is Yone's? Everyone talks about Yone's disease and people have heard a lot about it. It's a chronic disease and we must really understand that and because it's a chronic disease from times that calves particularly get infected to they show symptoms, it makes control difficult. So there's a couple of key elements that we need to understand. So Yone's disease is caused by a bacteria related to the TB bug. It's Mycobacterium avian paratuberculosis is the bacteria, or MAP. Um, and this bacteria gets into the lumen of the young animal's gut most likely, and it lies dormant there, and it doesn't show symptoms until probably two years plus, when often in older animals. And what the bacteria does is when it gets into the lumen of the gut, it causes chronic swelling in simple terms of that lumen. So if you think about the gut swelling out, that swelling slows down the absorption of nutrients. It leads to the symptoms we see like scour. Now, we must remember with some um, Yone's animals, uh, particularly before they get to the end stage where they're quite chronically infected, is we'll have no symptoms. But there will be immunity drop and in our dairy herds these can be our high somatic cell counts that are difficult to cure. And then it gets to a stage where we see the clinical signs of Yone's which is scour, diarrhea and wasting, weight loss. So uh, typically what I would have seen over the years with these cows before we started really getting on top of it and testing it is these animals would often present with scours and losing weight and get a dose, typically an anthelmintic dose often mightn't respond and we get dosed again and maybe you might get a mineral dose or a tonic or something like that. So there could be two to three doses with these animals. Now what we need to be thinking about chronic scour in cows that are losing weight, we need to be testing and we need to be thinking about Yone's disease. But you know, often a, a point to make is when these animals are often dosed and dosed and they're not thriving, they end up in a hospital pen, they can end up in hospital pens what mightn't be, you know, might be calving, calving pens, they might be close to calves, that's typically sometimes what you'd see and there's a huge risk and I'll talk about how you only is spread and why that's a risk uh, in a little bit. Remember this disease, how do you put a cost on Yone's? Because it's a chronic disease on some farms and it's invisible, it's hard to put a cost on it. But when it gets into a farm and it's chronically infecting a lot of cows, it really is a difficult and has a huge impact on production, profitability and performance of our herd. So it is a significant disease. And at a national level, we have a program looking at control. And that's really important as an exporter that we get on top of Yone's disease, like so many other diseases. Yone is an important production disease uh, and we need to get on top. So I, I always urge farmers to get involved in that program. Okay, so there are the symptoms of Yone's. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that again, but I suppose one of the key elements for Yone's, and, and people get a little bit confused about it, sl slightly frustrated, is testing is a key component of it. But with chronic disease that's occurring over a period of time, which is years, it can be difficult. Look, the tests aren't perfect. Um, there's milk and blood tests, but regular testing every year over a period of time will eliminate some of the, I suppose, the sensitivity and specificity issues around testing. So look at these, this is very um, very simple, but if I look at our big circles here, our adults, our, our replacements and our calves, you know, you might go in and a Yone's test this year and find low numbers of Yone's in your cows and you'll think, okay, I'm in a good position. Uh, and you might have nothing in your heifers, but you can't, the tests under two years won't show up because the Yone's bug, almost when it's ingested by the calf, it goes into hiding in the gut and won't show clinical symptoms till two plus. And we won't pick these up on antibody tests in blood or milk. So you could, you even could have heifers, even though we're not testing them, that are negative, but you could have a batch of calves that have been exposed to a cow or an infected cow uh, with yonis, and you could have a large number of calves coming through the system, maybe your replacements, that are yonis carriers or yonis positive animals. So while your test this year looks okay, we have to wait for two years to come in to see the generations as they come into our herd. And that's really important with the Yone's control program, that it's over three to five to seven years maybe. And that's a difficulty and a, and a slight frustration. But that is what Yone's is about. It's a chronic disease and we need to have a time period, a, 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 I suppose a prolonged period, where we look at it. So a snapshot, while it's always good to see low positives, we can never guarantee because we can't test these animals 
under two years of age with either blood, milk obviously, but are either with blood because the, the, the bug is hiding from the immune system. And the way all our testing works are, we, we, the urinary testing is we look for antibodies. So when an infection comes in, the body creates antibodies to it, the immune system reacts, and those antibodies, we measure that level of antibodies in blood or milk, and that'll tell us how much in the individual animal's blood exposure uh, has been developed. Now how sensitive that test is, 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 is one of the issues, but, if we do it year on year, and I know I keep saying it, that's a really key part to the program. So, um, also with testing, we must remember, while milk and blood are the main ones, we can also use faecal tests and animals that have come up positive for a confirmatory diagnosis where we actually look for the bacteria itself in feces. So that's the third test that's there. So milk and blood is the most common one. But we also can test feces for the actual pathogen or the bacteria um, using a number of different ways. That is slower. And that's how we often, in our Irish control system, uh, confirm a positive animal. Um, I have a question down here. Should I take it serious? Is urine a significant disease? Absolutely yes. So there's two elements uh, for urine is really. And I think we'll just go back and really look at um, how, uh, how urine is spreads. Okay? So regular testing will allow us to identify these positive animals. And they're really important. Um, because we don't want to keep them in the herd if at all possible. In some herds with a lot of yones, we've got to manage them because you can't cull everything, but you've got to know that they're a risk. And then we need to look at the control of the spread as part of the program, and there's critical points on that. So if we look at a yones positive cow, she's got yones, she's, got, she's ingested as a calf, and she's got this chronic uh, inflammation occurring, maybe or maybe not symptoms showing, how does she transfer that on? How does this generational transfer occur? She can spread yonis in three ways. Um, one in the womb to her calf, which is quite rare, but it can occur. Uh, number, uh, the second one really is colostrum. She'll have yonis in her colostrum. But the big one with yonis is she'll be spreading it in her feces, even if she's not showing clinical symptoms. You think about these scoury cows I talked about down here. They're shedding massive amounts of yonis. So feces is in our feces. And now we think about how do we manage th those risks? Very difficult in, in the uterus. We, if, if she know is positive, her, her calf is, some, is, 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 some, is an animal that's going into the herd as a replacement. It, it's going to be at risk. Uh, her calf from a colostrum perspective. And that's why pooling colostrum is a risk. So if we're pooling colostrum in yonis herds that are testing, it's a risk because you're pooling potential uh, infected cows with healthy cows and you're, you're, you're exposing calves. And number, the big one is feces. So, um, and it was described to me once as shit and mouth disease. That's, excuse my French, but really that makes kind of sense to me that we're trying to avoid fecal exposure for calves. Now in dairy farms, that's relatively, uh, it's I suppose reasonably easy if we're looking in Yoni's herds, particularly for snatch calving, taking the calf away from the cow, particularly if we know she's positive. So what happens to the calf is the young calf will ingest yeah. um, fecal material, which will happen, uh, and that, if that contains Yoni's, it starts this chronic process where the Yoni's bug gets into the gut, it hides almost, for anywhere, you know, you won't see clinical signs for probably two years and, and beyond it. And then that's how it propagates along. So the, the risks and the control are about is, is reducing these risks. Um, and you, know, you need to know your positive animals. Uh, you need to do that over time. And then you need to reduce the risk of these positive animals to your calves. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a, it's, it, the two things work together. And you can see now that if you have very little yonis here, but you have one positive cow, in two years time, she could have all these positive calves affected coming through the system. And I hope that's making sense. So you only avoid the immune system, um, but it, it can be a really, really tricky, tricky, tricky one to control. Uh, so I suppose if I wanted to, to say a couple of things on you just to sum it up, it's a chronic disease and it requires a long-term thinking, long-term planning. Testing works, but it has to be done regularly. Uh, and then to, to go and coincide with the testing, we need to minimize down the spread on the farm, starting um, with knowing the positives, uh, their, their calves are at risk, their colostrum is at risk, but really that feces for the young calf is a big, big challenge. Um, and then of course, as part of your regular testing and your positive animals, 
a culling policy appropriate for the numbers of units that you're seeing that you're not keeping positive animals in the herd certainly if they're high somatic cell counts or anything like that we need to remove them um, but if there's lots of numbers a plan so it's planning 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 with units and it's a long-term game okay so that's it uh, that's Yone's disease a thought for day today this will never probably happen in a video ever again where we talk about having a sense of fun with Yone's in the one video but it's important and um, it's been interesting and uh, I, I think probably a lot of people are like me now you're, you're all this stuff is going on around us we're thinking about our lives and things we're doing and uh, maybe you're not like me but um, important to have a sense of fun even in difficult times sense of humor is a, is a great thing to do and i even reflect myself you know very serious about work very serious about what i do which is good but i think i can have a little bit more fun and um, so I, that's my message today it's only my personal thoughts but a sense of fun it's no harm and that's my thought for today